What's up, guys? It's And It's Gone, and today we will be talking about the pitching prominence of the Miami Marlins over the past decade. And in the MLB, development trends seem to form. The Dodgers always have the masterful ability to turn any washed-up veteran into their prime form again. The Astros and Brewers tend to develop any top-of-the-line pitching prospect into an ace. And lastly, the Marlins have a mold of what a great starter would look like and develop them accordingly, and often at the expense of their own hitting. The Marlins have consistently found and developed great talents that have made the Major League roster over the past decade. And this video will cover the years starting from 2013 onwards and cover any key trades, injuries, or prospects to watch. But before we get onto this video, could you guys please hit the like and subscribe button? Currently, only 3% of people who watch my videos are subscribed. So if y'all do, not only would it help me grow my channel, but it also encourages me to create more videos like this one for you guys. And without further ado, let's get onto the video. Now, before we actually hit the 2013 season, it's important to establish the context of what would be an interesting season to come. Now, coming off a of last place 2012 season, the Marlins did some retooling and on November 19th, 2012, made a trade that would jumpstart this movement, sending arguably their two best pitchers in Mark Burley and Josh Johnson for a hall of prospects, headlined by number 58 overall outfielder Jake Marisnik and four others, including Anthony Descalfani and Henderson Alvarez, who would pitch well for the Marlins over the next half decade to come. However, it's hard to pick a clear winner in this trade, as the highly touted Marisnik never really panned out in a Marlins uniform, nor did Descalfani see success in his career in Miami. Josh Johnson for the Blue Jays regressed heavily in his lone season in Toronto, while Mark Burley ended up pitching pretty well in his final three seasons, even making an all-star appearance there. The 2013 season ended in another last place finish for the Marlins, but gave the team some hope for the future, especially from the pitching side. Former first round pick and top prospect Jose Fernandez dazzled in his rookie debut, posting a 2.19 ERA while playing in the All-Star game and winning NL Rookie of the Year, all at only 20 years old. Henderson Alvarez improved greatly from his time in Toronto to post a respectable 3.59 ERA, with himself being only 23 years old. And Nathan Avaldi, did you know he played for the Marlins? pitched to a 3.39 ERA in 18 starts, also at 23 years old, and 22-year-old Jacob Turner was very solid with a 103 ERA+. Plus. And this young pitching rotation of low 20-year-olds actually held their own in the major leagues and gave the fan base some hope for future contention, along with the call-ups of JT Romuto, Marcelo Zuna, and Christian Yelich to varying success. From the draft, they did select Colin Moran with their first round pick, who would not end up panning out for them, but in the second round, they did select Trevor Williams, who's a quality pitcher in the majors today, albeit not on the Marlins. An extremely quiet Miami Marlins offseason, headlined by a trade for reliever Carter Capps, meant that all Marlins fans were looking for this 2014 season was continued growth from their young talent. However, at least on the pitching side, it did not come to be. Jose Fernandez, while still dazzling, was limited to only 8 starts due to Tommy John surgery due to a torn ACL. Nathan Avaldi and Jacob Turner, once solid pitchers last year, regressed heavily back towards the mean with Avaldi posting a 4.37 ERA and Jacob Turner posting a 5.97 ERA respectively. However, they may have gotten a bit unlucky, possibly due to poor defense in the outfield. Valdi's uh, FIP, fielding independent pitching, is a full run lower at 3.37 ERA, and Turner is almost two runs lower at exactly four, leading to some optimism that this was more of a blip in their stats rather than the true talent, and which it could be much better. Furthermore, young pitchers Brad Han, Andrew Heaney, and Anthony Desclafani all made their major league debuts this year, with middling results. At the trade deadline, though, they would send over highly touted Jake Marisnik and former first-round pick Colin Moran for a young, promising pitcher in Jared Cozart and Enrique Hernandez. In the draft, the Marlins selected one of the all-time busts in Tyler Kolek with a second overall selection, who would never end up reaching the major leagues. Notable selections in this draft, though, do include Brian Anderson and Stone Garrett. The 2015 offseason was headlined by two trades, both of which would end up hurting the Marlins long term in terms of their pitching rotations. First, the Marlins would trade their innings leader Nathan Eovaldi for David Phelps and star Martin Prado, 
who would then regress heavily to average with the Marlins. Considering who Evaldi would turn out to be, this would sting a little bit, but the Marlins also threw an unranked 22-year-old Domingo Herman, and this makes this trade turn out to be a loss with the Marlins, as Herman has turned out to be a pretty decent pitcher for the New York Yankees. And the second trade would bring Dan Heron, D. Gordon, and Miguel Rojas to the Marlins in exchange for Andrew Heaney, Kike Hernandez, and Austin Barnes. Overall, while this trade turns out to be a win-win for both teams, as they would get their desired production out of their players, considering that Dan Heron only pitched one season for the Marlins, compared to Heaney's continued consistency outside of a Marlins uniform, the Marlins would have loved to still have Heaney on their roster for the next couple of years. This is also where the Marlins began to tap into the international market effectively, with the signing of Edward Cabrera, a 16-year-old at the time, who would pay his dues in the minor leagues before coming up in the 2020 shortened season and showcase his immense potential. The 2015 MLB season would end up being a breakout for their positional player group, but pitching-wise, it maybe wasn't meant to be. The top end of the rotation, suddenly filled with veteran talent, struggled with their best pitcher in Dan Heron, only pitching 129 innings to the tune of a 3.42 ERA due to a midseason trade. Tom Coyler, a steady presence in the Marlins rotation, continued that with a 4.08 ERA and David Phelps struggled in his first season with the club, posting a 4.5 ERA. However, the young talent in the back end began to impress with Adam Conley posting a 3.76 ERA and a now 22-year-old Jose Fernandez coming back from Tommy John surgery late in the season and posting a 2.97 ERA in just over 60 innings of work. And Jose Ureña showing spot starts of potential. But Henderson Alvarez, a steady presence in the Marlins rotation, was out most of the year with injury and a better pitching rotation would have possibly pushed the Marlins into playoff contention this year, especially with the balanced hitting from their lineup. And in the draft, the Marlins selected two future Padres in Josh Naylor and Chris Paddock, but overall did not have any standout selections for the team specifically. Trading Dan Heron for just two prospects at the 2015 trade deadline after trading such a huge haul to get him in the previous offseason hurt a little bit, and the Marlins used this time period to see what they could get from their young guys in hopes for future development. But during the 2015-2016 offseason, in a head-scratching move, they would send one of their top pitching prospects in Trevor Williams to the Pirates for Richard Mitchell, who would never pitch for the Marlins. They would also sign Wei Yin Chen to be a quality middle-of-the-order pitcher for the next couple of years. The 2016 season started out great for the Marlins, with them at one point going 9 games over 500 very late into July, and this meant that they were buyers at the deadline for the first time in a long time. They dealt away huge pieces like Josh Naylor and Chris Paddock for the Padres for Fernando Rodney and Andrew Kashner, who would struggle mightily in a Marlins uniform. And despite trading valuable prospects for a run at the playoffs, a second half collapse left them with a losing record at the end. And in his first season back, Jose Fernandez posted another all-star season, but everyone around him failed to uh, have consistent numbers. Steady Tom Kohler fell under the major league average, but still posted 176 innings. Wei Yin Chen disappointed in his first season with the Marlins to the tune of a 4.96 ERA, and all of their young pitchers struggled with ERAs above 5. But surprisingly, what kept them afloat was all-around great hitting, combined with a good bullpen, something contradicting today's squad. And draft-wise, they selected Braxton Garrett, who still pitches for the Major League squad today, but continued to miss in the later rounds. Tragically, Jose Fernandez died in a boating accident late into the 2016 season. A great pitcher and steady presence both on and off the field for Miami, I have no doubts that Fernandez would have continued to lead the Marlins rotation today. The 2017 offseason was mainly led by a trade for Dan Straley from the Reds, in which they didn't really part with any meaningful pieces. But overall, the majority of the excitement now came from a Miami lineup headlined by John Carlos Stanton, Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna, and JT Realmuto. Ownership continued to do little in free agency to help out this squad, though, and it showed with a tough 2017 pitching rotation in which the most promising piece was Jose Arena, who took a huge step forward posting a 3.82 ERA and leading all starters in ERA+, plus, while pitching 169 innings. Recent trade acquisition Dan Straley was solid for the Marlins though, pitching 182 innings with a 92 ERA+, plus. but everyone else was pretty abysmal. Adam Conley took a huge step back from a pretty solid 2016 campaign, and the back of an end of the rotation consisted of a revolving door with the complete regression of Tom Collar and trades decimating the pitching depth that at one point was overflowing with young talent. 
The farm system pitching-wise looked promising though, uh, but no pitchers would be able to help out this squad. In the draft, they would continue to select pitchers by drafting left-handed hurler Trevor Rogers in the first round. Furthermore, with them being so terrible this year, they shipped off relief pitcher David Phelps now to the Seattle Mariners for four prospects, one of which turning out to be Pablo Lopez. Following another losing season despite the exciting young core position players, the 2017-2018 offseason marked a huge turn in the Marlins rotation due to ownership blowing up the current core of position players. A bunch of key trades were made and the ramifications were felt all around the league. For starters, they traded pitching prospect Michael King to the Yankees for Caleb Smith, a middle of the rotation arm for them. And then the floodgates opened for the Marlins. Franchise faces John Carlos Stanton and Dee Gordon were shipped off to the Yankees and Mariners in what was mainly a salary dump move, and unfortunately, none of the young players acquired really made any noise in the major leagues. However, they made up for that by selling Marcelo Zuna to the Cardinals for a boatload of prospects, headlined by Sandy Alcantara and Zach Gallon. Later on, they would trade Yelich to the Brewers for a package that had yet to produce in the big leagues with once top prospects Luis Britton and Jordan Yamamoto never really panning out for the big league club. Overall though, these trades for minor league pitchers as well as the continued selection of pitchers in the top rounds of the draft vaulted Miami up the farm system rankings during this time period with starting pitching as a major strength for the first time in a long time. Into the 2018 season, we really see some light at the end of the tunnel from the starting pitching side. Obviously, with their four best position players gone, a winning season was out of the question. But the starting rotation now was not the liability it once was. Jose Arena continued to be this team's de facto ace, hosting a 3.98 ERA now as a 26 year old, and all of the other pitchers in Wei Yin Chen, Trevor Richards, and Dan Straley all took steps forward to be roughly league average instead of just abysmal. Caleb Smith made the team as the fifth starter and pitched pretty nicely, albeit in only 16 starts, with a 3.96 FIP. However, and most importantly, and what Marlins fans wanted to see in their 103 loss season was the continued development of their young starters. 22 year olds Pablo Lopez and Sandy Alcantara both made their major league debuts this year to pretty nice results with a 4.14 and 3.44 ERAs, respectively. Furthermore, in the farm system, one can see many more arms of where that were on their way, these past trades and these drafts, as well as the high picks. In the 2018 MLB draft, realizing that pitching was now a major strength in their system, the Marlins would begin to select outfielders with Connor Scott, who has yet to make the majors, and their only other pick of note was Nick Fortes, a catcher still on the team today. In the 2018-2019 offseason, it was characterized by one major trade consisting of that of franchise face JT Romuto to the division rival Phillies in exchange for a trio of prospects, one of them being Sixto Sanchez. Sanchez, while still on the team, has yet to live up to the vast potential of a once top 10 prospect in all of baseball, and JT Romuto has been a steady presence both defensively and offensively for the Phillies, and was a key contributor to their World Series run. I would have to think that the Marlins would not have made this trade under different financial conditions though. The Marlins would also hit on another international signee at this time, signing big hurler Yuri Perez, basically a clone of Alcantara at this point. The 2019 MLB season, despite it having another 100 loss season for the Marlins, continued to show promise in the pitching rotation. At only 23 years old, Sandy Alcantara took over as this team's ace, staying healthy and throwing 197 innings to the tune of a 3.88 ERA. Caleb Smith and Trevor Richards continued to be solid contributors to the middle of the rotation, and while Pablo Lopez admittedly struggled to the tune of a 5.09 ERA, the Marlins stuck with him in this losing season, and there's no doubt that he gained valuable experience from that. Smartly, the Marlins gave chances to young guys in the back end of the rotation, with Eliezer Hernandez, Jordan Yamamoto, and Zach Gallen all receiving starts over Jose Arena and Wei Yin Chen, who was given a bullpen role. Zach Gallen, in fact, was excellent, placing 7th on the team in war when all was said and done, despite only pitching 7 starts. During the 2019 trade deadline, the Marlins shipped Gallon to the Diamondbacks for shortstop prospect Jazerado Chisholm. This trade was inevitably really good and helped both sides as Chisholm turned out to be a dynamic presence when healthy, and Gallon has since turned into an ace and Cy Young candidate. In 2019 draft, the Marlins continued to focus on position players by drafting JJ Blade 4th overall. 
The 2020 season was weird on so many levels, but for the Marlins, it ended up benefiting them the most by making the expanded postseason, finishing at a 31-29 and clip, despite having to rush games due to an outbreak in their club. However, the starting rotation was a steady one, and despite it being led by young pitchers, was excellent for the club and the reason why they made the playoffs. Pablo Lopez had a huge bounce back season, leading the team with 11 starts and posting a 3.61 ERA and 120 ERA+. Plus. Sandy Alcantara continued to be great, albeit in only 7 starts, posting an ERA of exactly 3, and Eliezer Hernandez broke out to the tune of a 3.16 ERA, albeit in only 6 starts. Furthermore, 21-year-old breakout star Sixto Sanchez really stole the show in terms of the Marlins rotation. With some excellent stuff, Sanchez posted a 3.16 ERA in 39 innings, showcasing his top potential and has yet to be fully grasped today. And while Trevor Richards struggled to the tune of a 6.11 ERA, he was still very young at only 22 years old, and as a former top pick, still had tons of potential left from the left-handed side. At the trade deadline, they connected on a huge trade by acquiring Starling Marte from the D-backs for a middle of rotation piece Caleb Smith and some other prospects. This would end up being huge for the Marlins later on, and Caleb Smith would never really pan out for the D-backs. And in this short in 2020 draft, the Marlins changed gears by selecting right-handed pitcher Max Mayer, who at this point is too early to really deem how this pick has turned out yet. Despite making the playoffs the previous season, another quiet offseason ensued, with no major moves being done to the already solid starting rotation. However, the Marlins would not get so much luck this time, as they would return back to the basement of the National League, posting a 67-95 record. However, this was in no part due to their starting rotation, which was excellent. Sandy Alcantara continued to do what he does, throwing 205 innings and posting a 3.19 ERA. But the real standout was Trevor Rogers, a former first-round pick who won NL Rookie of the Year while posting a 2.64 ERA and making the All-Star team. Pablo Lopez continued to be a steady presence, posting a 3.07 ERA, and longtime minor leaguer Zach Thompson broke out with a 3.24 ERA. However, with them being so bad due to an overall poor hitting, they made one big trade, trading away a rental in Starling Marte to the Oakland Athletics. For a longtime top prospect, Jesus Lazardo, who hadn't lived up to the top prospect status at that point. With the Marlins, he admittedly struggled with a 6.44 ERA, but at only 23 years old, the Marlins were going to ride with him. The Marlins once again had a very quiet offseason going into the 2022 season, with the only major move being a trade for Jacob Stallings in which the middle of the rotation pitcher Zach Thompson would be headlining the return package. Marlins fans hoped for continued dominance from their established starters, as well as continued development from the young guys, and for the most part, they got it. Sandy Alcantara came into his full self and won the Cy Young Award by throwing 228 innings to the tune of a 2.28 ERA. Pablo Lopez was excellent to start the season, and while he never kept that form throughout the season, he still finished with a very respectable ERA of 3.8. And while Trevor Rogers kind of regressed heavily, Jesus Lazardo came into form and posted a 3.3 ERA. And they finally called up long-awaited top prospects Edward Cabrera and Braxton Garrett, each of whom impressed with ERAs under 3.6 at 24 years old. With Alcantara leading the squad, this pitching rotation was one of the best in the league, but overall poor hitting was their downfall, with only Garrett Cooper and an oft-injured Jazz Chisholm being the only bright spots on an otherwise very poor Miami Marlins lineup. The 2022-2023 20, 20, offseason saw the Marlins more active than most, signing key players for positional groups like Gene Segura and making a few key trades one of which was trading away longtime middle of the rotation arm Alessia Hernandez to the Mets for a prospect. However, the main trade came with a Twins and may it, be, it may be a win-win if it all pans out, in which they dealt away Pablo Lopez plus two prospects to the Twins for Luis Arias, a top-of-the-line bat to aid the Marlins lineup. In this, they deal from a position of strength, both at the major league level and in the farm system, with their starting pitching to acquire a position that is desperately needed in hitting, especially contact hitting, with many of their best bats like Jorge Soler and Brian De La Cruz being a power profile bat. The loss of Pablo Lopez going into 2023 season sings a little bit, but the Marlins still have a very strong starting rotation led by Alcantara and Lizardo. 
Yuri Perez has since made the major league team and has dazzled with a 2.84 ERA and looking like another potential ace to the likes of Alcantara. However, reflecting on this team over the past decade, I see a lot of wasted potential. Not only with the teams that they could have made with the playoffs through a little bit more spending, but also in the drafts. In the mid to late 2010s, the Marlins missed on pick after pick, especially in the middle and late rounds, and those are players are that add depth to the major league team. However, a few key trades really built the Marlins team, especially that Marcelo Zuno one, and a former top prospect like Sixto Sanchez and Edward Cabrera can really turn it around and return to past prominence, the Marlins could really have an all-time great starting rotation if all breaks right for them. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below new video ideas. Let me know if you guys like these sort of timeline videos. Obviously, they do take a bit longer to make than most, as this one's upping around 20 minutes. But if you guys like it, I'll be happy to make more for you guys. But if you have any other ideas, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.